Hello and welcome to this channel. Today we are going to implement live streaming to a Flutter application using Zigo Cloud. Zigo Cloud provides a wide range of communication features, including video calling, chat, video conferencing, and live streaming. These features are built on a reliable and scalable infrastructure that can support millions of concurrent users. Why use Zigo Cloud? One is developer-friendly SDKs and APIs. Zigo Cloud's SDKs and APIs are easy to use and integrate into your app. They are well documented and have clear examples so you can get started quickly. The second one, reliable and scalable infrastructure. Zigo Cloud's infrastructure is reliable and scalable so you can be sure that your communication feature will be available when your users need them. And the third one is wide range of features. Zigo Cloud offers a wide range of communication features so you can build the perfect app for your needs. What is UI Kit? UI Kits are pre-built UI components that allow you to quickly and easily add live streaming features to your app. They are designed to be easy to use, even if you don't have a lot of experience with coding. So when you use the Zigo Cloud package in your Flutter application, you don't need to implement lots of visual features. They are already built in and you just need to add them to your application. In fact, you don't need to actually write the code. We will see this feature in the coding section. What are the features of Zigo Cloud's UI kits? One is that it is easy to use. Zigo Cloud's UI kits are designed to be easy to use, even if you don't have lots of experience with coding. It is flexible, so you can customize them to fit your specific needs. It is scalable. You can easily add more users to your app without sacrificing performance. And it is reliable. You can be sure that your live streams will be available when your users need them. In this video, we are going to focus on live streaming service from Zigo Cloud. When you implement live streaming in your Flutter application, what Zigo Cloud handles? One is UI and interaction of the live streaming module, message sending and display, audio and video data transmission, camera and microphone management, and live viewer statistics. These are all handled by Zigo Cloud. Now, what you need to handle in the live streaming? One, user login registration, live list management, and top up and send GIFs, and etc. if you need to add more features. This is the diagram of what happens when you use the Zigo Cloud service. On the left, you have your app and you have integrated the Zigo Cloud pre-built UI kit SDK. You start a live stream and it goes through the Zigo Cloud live streaming network. And then your audience watch the live on their device. Now let's get started. So this is the Zigo Cloud website. And as you can see, they have lots of products, video call, voice call, in-app chat, cloud recording, and live streaming, and so on. So we are going to focus on live streaming in this video. And as you can see, there is a mention of UI kits. UI kits helps you to build faster in the shortest possible time. So before we move to the coding section, we need to create an account. Zigo Cloud is going to give you 10,000 free minutes if you use the link in the video description. So let's use the link to create an account. We are going to click on the sign up and then you need to fill up this form, your first name, last name, your email, and after you entered your email, you need to click on get code and you will receive a code in your email. Next, you need to click on start your free trial. Next, you are going to come to this page, which is the dashboard. And at the bottom, you can see your free minutes trials. You have 10,000 minutes to use. Now, we need to create a project. So we click on create a project. We click on live streaming. 
you can see you have lots of options and services to choose from. We click on next. You give the project a name. And then here you have two options. One is to use the UI kits and one is to use the SDK. We are going to use the UI kits. And in this section, you can see you have lots of platforms available for you. We are going to click on Flutter. This is the format that we need to use in our code. So we click on Start with UI Kits. Now we click on For Flutter and we click on Save and Start to Integrate. Now in this page, we need to copy two important codes. You have your app ID and app sign. You need to copy these two and we are going to need it in our coding session. So inside the Android Studio, we create a new Flutter application. And as you know, we see the default Flutter application, the counter application. First, we need to install the Zigo Cloud package so we can use it. We can go to the terminal and we write flutter pub add zigo ui kit pre-built live streaming and then we enter now that we have the package in our flutter project we can start using it this is the application that we need to create so we need two buttons in the middle so we go down to the build method and we need to create two elevated buttons one that says start a live and second one that says watch a live because we want to test and simulate starting a live stream and watching a live stream so we need to create two buttons and when the users click on each button they are going to be directed to the page called jump to live page and we are going to pass the parameter is host if it is true, it means that we are starting a live stream. And if it is false, it means that we are going to watch a live stream. So to implement this jump to live page, we have this function. And in this function, we use the navigator to push and to go to live page, which is going to be another stateless widget. So we need to create our stateless widget. Before that, we need to have a user ID. User ID is randomly generated and we can use the random function and create a user ID. So next, we are going to create a stateless widget. Inside this, we need to get the isHost parameter. Next, inside the build function, we need to provide our UI kit information as we saw earlier on the website. So we have the Zigo UI kit, pre-built live streaming, and then we have app ID and app sign. These two we copied before from the website, so we can paste them here. App ID needs to be as an integer, and then app sign needs to be as a string. And we have user ID, which is going to be the user ID that we created before username and live id are the same and the config is going to be based on is host variable if it is true or if it is false we can change the config the next step is to add permissions when you start a live stream or when you are going to watch a live stream your phone uses various permissions like accessing to your camera accessing to your microphone and so on so we need to add these permissions to our project. So for the Android, we are going to the Android app SRC and then main. We are going to double click on Android manifest.xml. And before the application starts, we are going to add these permissions. Access Wi-Fi state, record audio, internet, access network state, camera, Bluetooth, modify audio settings, write external storage, 
read phone state and wake lock. Next, we need to modify build.gradle file. So we are going to Android app and we are going to open build.gradle. In this file, we are going to modify compile SDK version, which can be 33. And then we need to set the minimum SDK version, mean SDK version to 19. And we need to set multi-dex enabled to true because when Android applications are compiled and built, they can only have 64,000 functions in one APK file. So when it exceeds that number, it's going to give you an error. In order to enable the multi-dex feature, you need to add this line, multi-dex enabled true. And in the dependencies also, you need to add implementation, Android X, multi-dex, multi-dex, and then the version 2.0.1. We need to also modify the project to prevent the code obfuscation. First, we need to create a new file under Android app. So we right click new file and we're going to name it proguard-rules.pro and when we enter. And here we are going to add this line. Now we go back to our build.gradle file and inside build types and release, we are going to add this line. This is all we need to do for the Android application. Now for the iOS, we go to iOS and then we go to pod file and double click to open it. And in the last part, we're going to add lines of code so we can manage our permissions. Just like what we did in the Android, we added the permissions and this is the way we add the permissions for the iOS application. Next, we are going to go to the runner folder and we're going to open info.plist. We double click on this and here we are going to add the following under the dict section. Now this is all we need to do. So we can run our application and see how it works. We first click on start alive and we click on start. Because this is the emulator, the camera doesn't work properly. But this is what we mean by UI kit. You can see this is all built in. Face beautification, skin tone, blusher, smoothing. We didn't write any code for these parts, but these are already built and available inside the UI kits. And the same is true for the chat section. In the live streaming, you can have the chat option. This is already built in into the application. Now I'm going to start a live stream on a phone and then we are going to watch a live here. Now we are going to click on watch a live. It takes some time before we get the live stream. And now you can see that we have the live stream. And the emulator is going to watch a stream, so it doesn't have all the features at the bottom. It only has the chat feature. So we're going to say hi. And it's going to appear on the screen. I leave the link to the 10,000 free minutes in the video description as well as other links if you want to check it out. I would like to thank Zigo Cloud for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.